we're in uh, room 119 of uh, building R25 at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. Uh, I'm Chris Davis, I'm a space scientist and uh, I'm the, the specialist, I guess, for the um, heliospheric images, which are a camera on the stereo mission. Uh, stereo is a mission which has two spacecraft flying away from the Earth in opposite directions and uh, from those two perspectives we're able to look back at the Sun and make 3D observations of the, the solar wind, anything that's coming out from the Sun. Um, and the reason we're doing that is we want to try and uh, see what's on the solar wind that's heading towards the Earth because if something nasty gets blown off the surface of the Sun it can influence the Earth's space environment. Now the UK provided all the cameras on the mission, but we also provided two of the actual instruments themselves, two um, complete functioning instruments known as the heliospheric images. That's a team has given a go for launch. Watching them get launched was one of the more stressful things I've done. It's not often people have their careers strapped to the top of a big firework. <laughs> Lift off of the Delta II rocket with stereo, giving us a three-dimensional look at the physics of our sun. And that's the really risky part of the whole mission. Um, once they were up and they were running, um, then actually that's the, the start of the work for us. Because what we do here is we actually get the images back from the spacecraft and we, we calibrate them and process them so that the scientists studying the solar wind or the, or the stars in the background or the planets can actually see as best they can the data in our camera. <laughs> This is one of the images from the inner camera on the heliospheric imager. And this is the sort of thing we get with absolutely no processing. We put a bit of color on it just to, uh, to show uh, the changes in light intensity. But the suns would be about here and be about the size of my fingernail, I guess. Um, and uh, this is the planet uh, Mercury, this is the planet Venus. This isn't the sun itself, this is just light being scattered off dust in space and 99% of the light we get back is coming from just dust. So the first thing we would do is trying to correct for the, the, the shutter. That just leaves us with these bright dots from uh, to show the planets. You can still see they're much bigger than the, the stars in the background. But the thing we're interested in is the solar wind and that's hidden behind this haze of light that's coming off the light scattered off the dust. But the things we're looking for move. The, the actual dust doesn't change very much. So we just subtract everything that doesn't change between images and that enables us to get to this sort of image. Uh, where now we can see this is a, a big eruption of material coming off the surface of the sun. Scientists call them coronal mass ejections, which is a tedious name for a huge eruption of material. Each one of these things is, is, ab is about a billion tons of material traveling out from the sun at a million miles an hour. So you can see that Mercury here is not a particularly good place to be right now. Well, the reason we care about coronal mass ejections is because if one comes towards the Earth it can influence our, our modern technology. Back in 1859 there was a huge eruption from the Sun which hit the Earth and the zenith of the technology at the time was the American telegraph system and it caused mayhem and that people were electrocuted and uh, the telegraph system went down. Well if you think about now we've got a lot of spacecraft that are vulnerable to these conditions and ground-based power grids as well can be, uh, can, can be affected by them. So we're trying to work out what the extremes of what we're calling space weather are so that we can work out how to defend ourselves against it. This is the inner camera that uh, we saw before with the sun here. This is an outer camera which is much bigger 70 degree field of view uh, and the storm's launched here, it moves right across the camera past Venus and we actually saw it arrive at Earth. The, the, for us that was, the, that was the exciting thing, was that we had a technique now, we have cameras in space which actually enable us to actually make predictions and that's what we've started now doing, real predictions of when these things are coming towards the Earth. <laughs> Well, we do see some really interesting uh, serendipitous or just sort of lucky observations. And this is uh, Comet NK as it comes in towards the sun. One of these mass ejections goes off, and as it goes past, it actually takes the tail off the comet here. Another example of just quite how hostile it can be in space, right?